really spectacular it, it weather. It makes it so nice. The only thing I, I, you know, if it were my birthday and I were getting wishes, four foot rollers for the final moto. Yeah, that would be good. Hey, everybody around here, we could use. Not those. all the riders. Everybody else is going. Yeah. Well, Lake Let's Michigan is certainly capable of delivering that, as we've seen in the past. Oh yes. But not this weekend, and uh, I think our riders are um, largely okay with that. Keep that Kringle down. Oh, God. Chris Kringle. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a lot of them. Let's talk about them. On the number one machine out of Charlotte, North Carolina, sponsored by Judge Motorsports, Broward Motorsports, IPD Graphics. I'm going to go through it one time. ADA Racing, Fly Racing, Jet Trim. Jam Racing, Amsoil, Bomber Eyewear, and JC Racing, Jimmy Wilson. Boat number 10 out of Apex, North Carolina, riding for Hurricane Racing and Amsoil. That's Callaway Turner. Yeah, riders, please throw your, throw your hand up in the air so the uh, fans know who you are. Out of Cooper City, Florida, on the number 13 machine, Sponsored by Broward Motorsports, Judge Motorsports, Exotic Signs, Showy Jet Pilot, Wamilton's Jet Lift, and Jet Trim, Sammy Neme. Boat number 15 out of High Point, North Carolina, riding for STB Racing, Hurricane Racing, Amsoil, Jet Dynamics, Fly Racing, and Rock Tape, Matthew Richuk. Out of Muck Muckwanago, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, I can say McWanago, but not Wisconsin. <laughs> On the number 102 Yamaha, sponsored by Works Plunging and Tom Ski, Justin Trader. Trader fans over there. Out of Wadsworth, Illinois, rider for Wendrix Real Estate, Ultimate Watercraft, Sportland, L Ray, IPD, and Jet Renew. That's Mike Wendrix. On the 296 Yamaha out of Port Charlotte, Florida. Sponsored by WCP, Jet Lift, Action Jet Sports, Jersey Mike Subs, IPD, Abaco Sunglasses, Commander Industries, Skelet Motorsports, Injection Jet Trim, Kawasaki, Brett Underhill. Out of Leno Lakes, Minnesota, Yamaha mounted on the 419. Sponsored by Hanson Sports, Extreme Max Products, Jeff Hansen. Number 425 out of Dawsonville, Georgia. On the Lair Performance Watercraft, Jet Dynamics Yamaha, Wyatt Hayes. Out of Omaha, Nebraska, on the Yamaha. Sponsored by Swanson Racing and Compass Construction. On the 527, Brian Panks and Konelson. And number 918 out of Eagle, Wisconsin, on the Kawasaki, Paul Harding. That wraps up the field for the Pro-Am Ski Stock. Aha. Uh -huh. We you know, maybe we're getting our maybe we're getting our wish here. I see some of the larger boats coming back and forth. Maybe we're <laughs> gonna get that uh, I wonder if they're listening to us out there. Oh, I don't know about that, but I know the rider to keep an eye on is boat number one on the inside pole position. That's gonna be Jimmy Wilson. And uh, he has absolutely dominated racing today. And uh, the defending national champion riding for Judge Motorsports is uh, really the odds-on favorite to uh, take the, the overall here today in Pro-Am Stock Ski. Well, no question about that. But, boy, let's not forget about Matthew Richuk or Jeb Zarzauer. Zarzauer going out and doing that freestyle. Now right back in the thick of it in Pro-Am Ski. Well, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Wilson does not get a great jump this moto, but nonetheless, he is going to charge into that first turn. Is he going to hang on? No, he does not get the lead. Got a bad jump out of the gate. At that least looks like Skelet. And that is Skelet out in front with the hole shot on the inside. On the outside, Matthew Richuk, I believe. That is Richuk indeed. Where's Wilson? Wilson in second. Go oh, Skellick lost it. Skellick. Goes the wrong way. Oh, Wilson in the lead. Wilson now makes the turn. Here comes Richuk.
And well, that was unfortunate. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, boy, I I feel for uh, Mr. Skellet there. Well, Zarzauer got pushed way back. Looked like he was getting a pretty strong start. Well, out in front, haven't heard this today, Jimmy Wilson. Yeah, Wilson got a terrible jump, at least as far as Jimmy Wilson is concerned. But uh, nonetheless, works his way into the lead very quickly, uh, largely due to the mistake by Hayden Skellett, unfortunately. Yeah, he rectified that right away. Bye. So we got Wilson, Redchuck. Who we got in the third spot out there, Rick? Hard to see right now. I believe that's Paul Harding, 918. Oh, uh, if it's a 918, that's definitely Harding. But some of these numbers a little hard to identify. Redchuck going for the inside, and Wilson looks over. He was just kind of cruising, and look at what <laughs> Matthew Redchuck putting it down. Redchuck going wide, Wilson going tight. Wow, looking at the points there. Redchuck, the only one that's uh, got a strong possibility of meet, uh, beating uh, Jimmy Wilson in this. He'd have to finish first. Wilson have to finish significantly back. And Redchuck going to make a pass on Wilson. Redchuck. Inside, outside, he's jumping the wake. Here comes Richuk on the outside. Wilson looks over. There's nothing he can do, and Richuk hit goes down in the tray. Well, Jimmy Wilson out in front, and I think he is not riding as hard as he possibly can here in moto number three. He's got a couple wins under his belt. He's going to have a very – think about this. He has got – a knockdown drag out battle coming up in Pro Ski GP in just a little while. That's exactly what I was thinking, Rick Lake, as we're watching Jimmy conserve his energy here. You know, it's late in the day. He's had two days of racing, might be getting some cramps going on. You know, these are guys in great shape, but still, this much physical effort, there, you know, there's consequences when you put out this kind of energy. Yeah, and he, like I said, you know, he's got Mike Lippenstein and uh, uh, Craig Warner waiting for him in just a couple of races. And so, you know, he's going to do what it takes to win. There's no question about it. I don't think he's going to overdo it, though. And uh, like you said, conserve a little energy because this is a long day of racing. Are you kidding me? Mike Lippenstein shaking in his boots. He's got to race Jimmy Wilson. Look at Richuk reeling in Wilson. Where are they going to go? Richuk's going inside, and Wilson goes outside. Look at Richuk attack the inside. It's going to be a little late, but look at how close he's reeling in. Jimmy Wilson. Matthew Richuk, without question, one of the top up-and-coming riders in the ski division, 17 years old, out of High Point, North Carolina, riding for STB Racing, Hurricane Racing, Amsoil, Jet Dynamics, Fly Racing, and Rock Tape, and young Matthew Richuk is a hard charger that has looked good the last couple of seasons and is getting better and better. And uh, right now what he's doing, he is learning a lot about racing from Jimmy Wilson, the top national champion out there, and able to follow his lines, kind of see what he's doing. This is invaluable time on the race course. This is like school right now for Matthew Richuk because you're not going to see Jimmy Wilson probably make a mistake out there. You know, I want to throw something out here. Both of these riders are from North Carolina. I've got to think, if I'm Matthew Richuk, I'm thinking about uh, finding out Tim Judge uh, Motorsports phone number. <laughs> no, I'm looking down that he doesn't list him as a sponsor. And uh, 
Boy, if you get on the team with Jimmy Wilson, can you imagine a better mentor? Look at these guys. Wilson. Side by side down the front straightaway. Wilson looks over. Richek right there. Well, Wilson took the uh, uh, makeup buoy that lap to make up. a. He might have missed one out there that we didn't see. So he decides to take that just to be safe. And Richuk right behind him, keeping the pressure on, Jimmy Wilson. Well, I tell you, Matthew Richuk is having the ride of his life right now. Jimmy Wilson right there in front. He can taste the exhaust from Wilson. Wants to just reach out there and pull that ski backwards, make the pass, and get out in front of the national champion, Jimmy Wilson. Yeah, the stock class, these boats are fairly evenly matched, although a great tuner like Tim Judge is definitely going to fine-tune it and find a little something extra usually. Um, however, you get into the GP class, and that's really oh. where the Tim Judge tuning is going to Rich be a Rich went down hard. I'm sorry, uh, Rick, to jump in there for a moment. I thought he went completely underwater like the boat was sinking. Looks to be up and okay and running again behind Wilson. Uh, didn't lose a position as Richuk has ridden a really good race in second place. Wilson looks over his shoulder and said, what happened, young Matthew? Yeah, well, Ma young Matthew hit the hole that we had discussed earlier uh, on at the end of the back straightaway. He just went down hard. And Jimmy Wilson out in front on in cruise control right now. Like I said, probably saving his energy just a little bit because he's going to need it all come moto number three for Pro-Am Ski GP here in just a little while. Yeah, Meanwhile, Matthew Tri M Richuk gets some more great racing laps in behind the national champion. No question about it. And uh, we've got two races in between. So uh, those, those riders that are in Pro-Am Ski Stock and Pro-Am Ski GP, uh, they'll get about uh, 20 minutes to relax before they get back in and hit it for the third and uh, final most gruesome moto. And, you know, as you know, I really think highly of Matthew Richuk's riding style. And, um, and to that point, moto number three here, he has really gapped himself from the rest of a pretty strong field that he battled with in the earlier motos. This moto three, he has stretched it out. Now, no match for Jimmy Wilson, to be sure, but Matthew Richuk is putting in a very, very good ride here in moto number three. Yes, he is. He's got a third place in Moto 1 and a second place in Moto 2. A second place in Moto 3 if he stays where he's at, huh? Yeah, it's going to be a, probably a second place podium finish this weekend. And that is a nice accomplishment for Matthew Richuk. And definitely no negative being uh, one step below uh, Jimmy Wilson. Not at all. And look at this. Paul Harding right there. And talk about somebody who's sticking with it. Harding is right there behind Richuk. You know, he has had to work exceptionally hard to stay up there, and he's starting to reel in Richuk a little at a time. Well, Paul Harding also, uh, 38 years old, man. That's, that's some seriously good riding out there at uh, that age. Not that that's old, but that's definitely not 17. <laughs> you know. Well, <laughs> it's about twice 17. Uh, yeah, you the know, mouth. big, yeah. big difference, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot more birthdays under that hood. So uh, 17, kind of the energy never quits. 38, yeah, there's a point. All right, well, there's Hayden Skellett. Looking back, I'm trying to catch the numbers. Yeah, that is the 102, Justin Trader out of Muckawanago, Wisconsin. Impressed, Muckawanago? Yeah, you're doing well. Now, you know, <laughs> Hayden Skellett, his first... This is his first go-round in pro racing. So, moto number three, Hayden Skellick hits a hole shot in front of Jimmy Wilson. Think there's a little bit of pressure there uh, for Hayden? Oh, I think there is. Gosh. 13 years old, and he's got the entire field behind him. Well, he finished second in moto number one. Oh, Remember that. He's ridden he was, well. Yeah, I mean. There's no question. Yeah. But and I think getting out there with the hole shot, it was like, whoa. Jeb Zarzauer back up and running out there. He might have to go to a bottling company and pay for a little bit of this uh, this water because he's tasted it quite often this weekend. Yes, he has. 
but to his credit, gets right back up and goes right back to it. Zarzauer, 34 years old. As we talk about Hayden Skellett here, he comes down the front straightaway. R ride another solid moto. Little course correction there in the first lap. Yeah, course correction. <laughs> Jimmy Wilson, our leader, comes by, boat number one. Now all by himself, Matthew Richuk in second. Sammy Neeby comes by down a lap here, moto number three. Yeah, I tell you what, this is the only class that Sammy Nimi hasn't been, uh, you know, spectacular in, but still top 10. Absolutely. Sammy had an amazing day yesterday, no question about it, and uh, really showed some speed. It was a really impressive rides. Number 10 coming by, that is Callaway Turner. He's got Wyatt Hayes coming in right after him. Yeah, Pro Jeff Hansen. Stock. Jeff Hansen out of Lino Lakes. I'm sorry, Rick, we're starting here. I was just going to say, you know, he's uh, he hasn't been up front, but he's posting a good race so far. Stock skis in this class. Hayden Skellett and Brandon Konelson. Just a trader right behind, and here's your leader, Jimmy Wilson, lapping up into traffic. Yeah, Jimmy Wilson, watching him, it's just amazing. He makes it look so effortless. I rarely see him make any kind of a mistake the entire time. I mean, he's put in lap after lap today, and it's just they're so consistent. He's always the same, fast, up front, and smooth. And Jimmy, one of the taller ski riders to have this kind of success. Jeb Zarzauer goes down again here, looks around, and back up and attacking the course one more time. These pro motos are some long motos, and uh, they really will suck the energy out of you. About halfway through, you start feeling it, and uh, most notably your back really starts taking a beating, and yeah. Uh, you see these guys start stretching it out, standing upright a little bit more toward the latter stages of these motos. And uh, it, it starts hurting out there, believe me. Brandon Conelson still trying to chase down uh, Hayden Skellett. Here comes Jimmy Wilson. Maybe he can uh, just hold on to the back of Jimmy's boat, pull him a little further. Well, Jimmy's got two laps to go. Uh, white flag, sorry. Well, this will be interesting. Matthew Richuk knows it's the la the final lap. Jimmy Wilson doesn't. Is there anything we can do about that? <laughs> okay. White flag out, last lap. I'm going to keep an eye out for that checkered flag as Wilson comes in. Yeah, he's on the inside one more time, all by himself. Folks, as he comes together, he has certainly earned your applause. Give it up for Jimmy Wilson, your winner. Another perfect ride for Jimmy Wilson. Jimmy Wilson looking over going, where'd that, where'd that checkered flag come? I didn't see a white. Well, we kind of missed it. Our bad. Sorry, Jimmy. Great N ride. Nice ride by Matthew Richuk. Oh, yeah. Boat number 15. A great day for Matthew. Another second to secure a second overall. Paul Harding coming in. He had a great ride today, too. Harding coming in in that third spot. Jeb Zarzauer coming in right behind him.
All right, Pro-Am Runabout, box stock, race number 17 to the line. Why, look, Rick, they're already there. These guys are ready to go, and uh, which is a beautiful sight. Down in the starting line, we got a full gate of, uh, well, not a full gate, but uh, all the riders that are supposed to be there are there, which is awesome. Starting with... Uh, our defending when, national champion, boat number one out of Denver, North Carolina, on the Yamaha, riding for Factory Yamaha, Fly Racing Champion Power Sports, Reva and Triton Trailers. That's Brian Baldwin. And I'm looking for him on the number eight machine. Not seeing him out there. How about the number 75 Sea-Doo of Justin Taylor? Taylor out of Essex, Maryland. Boat number 110 on back on the starting line after some problems in moto number two. Good to see him back out there on the Judge Motorsports. Snyder built Broward Motorsports Yamaha, Bradenton Floritans, Troy Snyder. On the 243 Yamaha out of Loganville, Georgia. He's sponsored by Reva Racing, Fly Racing, Jet Renew, Jet Trim, Scat Track, Green Acres Landscaping, Incorporated. Dennis Mack. On the 717, Sea-Doo out of Macomb, Michigan, riding for D's Marine Fly Racing and the Sea-Doo X team. That's Alan Delecki. Rounding out the field, and I believe he's out there. No, I do see on the number eight boat out of Rydell, Georgia, on the Yamaha, sponsored by Metal Roofing Manufacturing and Dean's team at Riva, Jeff Dykowski. We're looking for the triple seven of Tim Miller. Tim Miller on the four two six boat, I understand. Pro-Am runabout box stock, really, really competitive class as these boats are very, very close in speed to each other. So every little bobble, any little mistake makes a huge difference, and the start is critical, and here we go. Boy, I'll tell you what, Alan Delecki on fire out there. He's going to have to follow Brian Baldwin. Too bad they're on the same... Uh, Side. Snyder with a hole shot on the inside. Remember, he had a great start last time when Baldwin was back. And uh, this time, though, Baldwin's not so back. Baldwin's out front and charging on the front straight away from the outside. Here comes Snyder on the inside. Snyder's oh. not going to let off, and he's going to hold the lead over Baldwin. Baldwin trying to stick him on the inside. Oh, -ho! and Snyder is not letting off. This is one rider who is going to make Brian Baldwin work to get by him. Snyder is going to hang on to the inside. Baldwin's going to have to go around the outside if he wants to get by Troy Snyder. Slugger is on it. Oh, yeah, he is not going to give up an inch. He is going to fight tooth and nail with Brian Baldwin to hang on to that lead. Snyder wants it. Look at him down that jet trim back straightaway on the gas. No question about it, Troy Snyder. I'll tell you what. There's very few riders that have put as many laps in as Troy has across this country for decades. Snyder goes to the outside split. Baldwin on the inside. Here comes Snyder down the front straightaway. He's going to maintain the lead easily. 
Over he's Baldwin. Start, starting to stretch it out a little bit. And I know Brian Baldwin's thinking, I'll use the inside. I'll be a little bit quicker than uh, Troy. Not happening, Brian. Troy is the man right now. Yeah, Troy, Troy on the gas on that Snyder. Tim Judge Yamaha out in front of the factory Riva Yamaha of uh, Brian Baldwin. And those two are going at it. This is going to be a great battle here this afternoon in Racine between two of the top runabout riders in the country. Yeah, don't blink. You'll miss it. We're going a ways back now for third and fourth spot. Trying to pick up who's in third. I know in fourth it's uh, Alan Delecki. Oh, and Baldwin goes inside again. Snyder on the outside. Oh. Really surprised to see that. And Snyder not attacking it the way he did the first couple of times. It's no, going to cost not. him. It's going to cost him. He Here backed he off. Here comes Snyder, full head of steam. Baldwin on the inside. No way is he going to be able to take the lead, but he closed the gap significantly. Oh, Snyder swings way wide that time. <laughs> Troy Snyder. And you know what? I'll just tell you this. If it was any other rider, Brian Baldwin would be in front right now. He was not going to try and stuff Troy. Yeah, they would have definitely traded some fiberglass seriously in that case. And they may yet here before this race is over with. Oh, look at that move by Baldwin. That was slick. He reeled in uh, Snyder by about four boat lengths. Almost got him. Snyder's got some horsepower, man. He jets. He has got some good low end acceleration onto that. Baldwin, oh, goes, Baldwin down. goes down. Baldwin's got a problem. Taking the seat off. Seat coming off just like Snyder in moto number two. Oh, deja vu all over again. Wow. So this time it's Baldwin. Last time it was Snyder. Another problem with these GP Yamahas and the seats coming off in the stock class. Very, very surprising. Surprising. In stock, yes. Modified, no. But that the way these guys ride, nobody can test boats for the OEMs like these guys. Right. They no should kidding. hire these guys to test them. Well, I know Jeff Dykowski, 60 years old. He's in second position right now. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he and Troy Snyder, they're best friends. Not. Well, <laughs> we won't have to worry about that at this point in time. And it looks like they're towing him in. Baldwin's on the hook. How unfortunate. Wow. So that's going to change everything for the overall today. Hey, I'll tell you what, I am amazed to see Alan Delecki back there in uh, third spot still with uh, Dykowski. Dykowski's actually starting to catch Snyder. Well, Snyder's got a five and a seven. Wow. We got to do some math here. We got a five and a seven, a three and a two. It looks to me like Delecki's got the best shot here of taking the overall. He's coming up behind. Here he comes. Here comes Delecki behind Dakowski. Oh, he got that pump wash and went about eight feet to the side. So Dakowski's got eight points. Dilecki's got five. So Dilecki's in a great position here. Snyder with a five and a seven, so he doesn't have a shot. No. And it's going to be Dilecki looking real good for the overall if things stay like they are right now. But as we've seen, who knows? Who's the next seat that's coming off? All I can say is if Delecky wins it, he will have earned it. That's a fact. I, I wonder if he's got any idea he's got a shot at the overall at this moment. Let's keep an eye on where we're at in the racetrack here. Troy Snyder, our race leader, boat number 110, comes down the front straightaway with a command lead over second place. Here's the battle for second. Dykowski in second and gaps Dilecki just a little bit that time and uh, Dykowski took the inside split so go figure yeah well and, uh, we see the uh, cross flags and I'm thinking it is rougher out there than it's been and that may be what's uh, starting to tighten up the splits just a little bit Rick and here comes Brian Baldwin the defending national champion uh, sight we don't see very often no not very often at all on the hook, getting a toe in, and that's going to bring his day in box stock to an end with a pair of wins in motos one and two. 
That's going to give him, oh, about, uh, what do you got, seven, so nine. Yeah, Dilecki with a uh, real good position here. And barring anything unforeseen, which I don't want to say that anymore because Troy Snyder had a problem in Moto 2. Yeah. Baldwin in Moto 3. Wow. Dilecki in front of or behind uh, Dikowski. But uh, that's okay. Yeah, if he drops back one more, that'll give the win to Baldwin. <laughs> Wow, Dilecki better, Dilecki better wick it up just a little yeah, bit. That's what I'm saying. And he's going to take a win here and, and a little cash home, right? Pro-Am runabout box oh, yeah. stock, man. That would be a real nice win for Alan Dilecki out of Macomb, Michigan on his sea -Doo, And he's in a great position right now. He'd be in a better position if he can get around uh, Dikowski. Well, all I can say is if one more rider – drops out Delecki's got and it's not Delecki <laughs> and Delecki will have the win Troy Snyder out in front enjoying this he worked hard for this moto number one no other number two had some issues and now he's out front and cooking and despite dropping out of moto number two he's probably going to end up on the podium quite possibly Probably not happily, but uh, <laughs> on the podium nonetheless. But definitely will have a ramification on point standings. Oh, no question. Boy, Jeff Dykowski really throwing it down this moto. I mean, he is, he is putting the pedal to the metal. Yeah, Brian Baldwin and Toy Troy Snyder not too far apart in points overall for the national championship. So uh, this is going to tighten Whoa. things up considerably. Oh, Dykowski went way deep into the outside. And uh, Dilecki on the inside. Yeah. He's going to take over second right here. Momentarily. Or is he? <laughs> uh -huh. Shoves Dykowski out and takes over second, and he's well on his way to an overall win here in Pro-Am runabout box stock if he can maintain his position in second place behind Troy Snyder. If he can just stay on the boat now, that's it. That is absolutely right, Kurt Nolenberg. All right, coming up next, Race 18, Sport GP. But this is definitely going to tighten the points up uh, overall for, this, for the national championship with Troy Snyder and, and Brian Baldwin. No question about it. So Troy's going to pick up some points here, a little bit at least, on Baldwin, I think. Five and a seven. And uh, maybe not, actually, because he's going to get a seven. So he's going to have a nine. Yeah, no, he's really not. By virtue of Baldwin's two first places. Right, which, uh, frankly, that's huge. That is huge. Yeah, two first places almost always means a podium, even and, with an issue. Yeah, even dropping out here in Moto3, he's still going to get some points today. Battle for the national championship. This is round three of the 2018 Pro Watercross National Tour presented by Broward Motorsports. And these riders are racing for both championships here in round three at Racine as well as the overall national title. So a lot going on here in each race. Very, very important points being awarded for each moto. All right, two laps to go. Troy Snyder right by us one more time. Number 110, the race leader. Dilecki. Number 717 in second on the yellow sea -Doo. And then Jeff Dykowski in third. I believe that's Tim Miller in fourth behind Dykowski.
And actually, Tim Miller has got a second and a third. That is not going to be – he's going to – he's right with Delecki on points. But uh, it's going to be Delecki edging out Miller for the overall if it comes down to it. it Miller would take a second virtu by virtue of his final moto placing a little higher than uh, Brian Baldwin. And Troy Snyder. Out again. Yeah, doing, it, doing everything he can, but uh... – White flag out for Troy, one lap to go. So Jeff, a lot a lot going on here with points, with guys dropping out. It really changes things up when uh, some of the top guys like Brian Baldwin drops out of a moto. It opens things up considerably for the rest of the field. Well, I'm looking down at these numbers, and I'm going, wow, Jeff Dykowski got a fourth, a fourth, and uh, assuming he stays there, a third, and he's not even going to get on the podium. No. Nope. Not the way it stands right now in the final lap. Keep an eye out for our race leader coming around, boat number 110. Troy out of Bradenton, Florida, riding for Judge Motorsports. Folks, put your hands together for Troy Snyder. Your race winner. Second position, Alan Delecki coming off the outside. Hey, he, unofficially your overall winner. He's got to be happy. Look at this battle here for third, coming down to the very last boy. And Dykowski takes third. <laughs> Slamming his hand down. Uh, Justin Taylor gets fourth. Wow, we wow, 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 wow. Next up on the starting line, Sport GP, moto number three. This is going to decide it. And uh, so far this weekend, it's been all Sam Nemi with a pair of wins. Number 13 down there on the line. And uh, the ball is in his court right now as we head into moto number three. Yeah, no question about it. Nemi has been the class of the field uh, here today. But Keith Dill always there so uh sam's got two uh two first place keith has two seconds kelly smith has a fourth and a third and kyle hayes has a third and a fourth so that's everybody that's up there in the points right now yep and it's uh really sam nemi's obviously sam nemi's event to lose here today but having said that in this class we've seen it before Actually, in virtually every class, we've seen it before because we just saw it with Brian Baldwin the race before, and he was in the driver's seat uh, looking like an easy winner in that uh, pro and runabout box stock class. Drops out of moto number three and loses the overall. All right, so we've got Nimi, uh, O'Rourke, Dearman. Keith Dill. Is that Kyle Hayes out there? And then Michael Osborne. Sport G carbon fiber lightweight hauls, and these guys get it on. Dale with a hole shot on the inside. Nimi with a hole or on the outside. Nimi with a hole shot on the inside. These two are going to battle yet again in this moto. Nimi's been unstoppable out front. Oh, God. Nimi with a huge lead already on the inside split. Wow. Look at Dale, though. Dale putting it down as well. Nimi going to come out in first. No question about that. Just how far back is Dill going to be? Nimi takes a quick look over his shoulder, checks to see where Dill is, and off he goes. He's got to feel really comfortable with Keith Dill right behind him. Those guys have done so many laps together. They trust each other, and uh, 
And frankly, they've been doing this long enough. They know how to do this safely. Both very, very experienced racers, as you say. And uh, right now, Sam Nemi is just at the top of his game on that Tim Judge tuned uh, Wave Blaster. We talked about it before. Lightweight carbon hull, triple cylinder, two-stroke engine, putting out some massive horsepower with the tuning of Tim Judge. And uh, he puts it to good use out there dominating in uh, Sport GP this weekend. Uh, yes, he does. I, I'm looking back there. Oh, Billy Dearman almost hit hit that hole, almost went off. But he's in a strong third-place position as well. Oh, Dearman. Boy, these riders hitting that hole as they come off the right-hand side to the outside split. I'm thinking inside for the rest of the day. KD, Keith Dill pursuing Sam Nemi. Sam Nemi heading on to the jet trim back straightaway one more time with a commanding lead over Keith Dill now and stretching it out. He is just gone, man. That yeah. is one fast wave blaster he's on. I'm going to say commanding doesn't doesn't really even come close. Totally dominant. Um, um, I don't know, I have to look for the right adjective for how far out front Sam Nimi got right away. Keith still in tow and uh, right behind him, Billy Dearman. That Kyle Hayes on the blue uh, boat, is that the 346 out there? Yes, it is. Boy, Kelly Smith, very aggressive on the inside. Smith on that right-handers will just throw that boat completely sideways. <laughs> oh, these guys are on the gas out there. From front to back, they are right as hard as they possibly can, battling for position, battling for points here on the Pro Watercross Tour. And uh, it is fun to watch these guys get after it. Well, I'll tell you what, it is absolutely like watching ballet, um, Sam Nemi out there. And once again, he's already backed way off the throttle, saving that fuel, saving that motor. Down the front straightaway, the race leader absolutely dominant this afternoon and all, all series long, Sam Nemi. And number two, been there all season as well, Keith Dill. Here's Dearman. Yeah, glad to have Dearman back on a boat. Had a couple of surgeries in the off season and he's back to it. Well, Kelly Smith making a move there over Michael Osborne. And I'm not seeing Brian uh, O'Rourke out there anywhere. No, I don't see Brian in this, in this moto. Didn't see him down on the line in, at the start, so. May have called it a day. Well, that's unfortunate. Would love to have seen him out there with his teammate Kelly Smith. So Nimi has a whole front straightaway lead plus some over Keith Dill. And Dill, in turn, has an equidistant over Billy Dearman in third. <coughs> the battle really is for fourth and fifth back here between Kelly Smith and Michael Osborne. They've been flipping back and forth every other lap. Excuse me, I said uh, Michael Osborne, I meant Kyle Hayes.
Sam Nemi flying down that back straightaway. Michael Osborne, 43 out of Sarasota, Florida. On the bullet hold, wave blaster. Here comes Nemi one more time, taking the halfway sign from our starter. You know what that reminds me of? What is that? Well, well we're more than halfway through, but if you want to get some of the gorgeous pro watercross oh, souvenir man. shirts, now's your opportunity before the races are over. Head over and see A.J. Handler. They call him the price slasher. Yeah, don't miss out on a chance to grab some really cool official pro watercross gear on sale here this afternoon. $10 for a official pro watercross t-shirt and just $20 for a really, really cool uh, hoodie zip up sweatshirt. Beautiful sweatshirt. Definitely take advantage of these prices here today in Racine uh, for pro watercross official merchandise. Right down here behind us, the official Pro Water Cross booth, and you can grab whatever you want down there. Check it out before you, uh, before the racing ends today, for sure. If you buy more than one shirt, ask AJ Handler to show you the video of his lovely wife singing the national anthem because she did such a great job yesterday. Oh, that was amazing! Absolutely amazing. No question about it. Oh, what a day here, Racine. Oh, what a what. weekend here in Racine. We're got, gonna be sorry to see it go. Got the master of disaster, Richard Ignacio, bringing everybody the vibes all over the world, making it happen, burning up cables. Live streaming 247.com. Slashing and burning all the electrical equipment he can get his hands on. Whoa, right or up on the far left hand side. Oh, ejection. Got a rider about 30 feet from his watercraft, getting assisted immediately by our awesome watercross staff. I think that's Kelly Smith, based on what I'm seeing out there. Hey, AJ, you got any shark energy down there? Ooh. Yeah? Grab me one of those. Sugar free? Yes, please. I'm coming down. Grab me one of yeah. All right, Nimi continuing delayed. Kelly Smith back at his boat. Oh, no, I just heard if you buy a shirt, you can get a free Shark Energy drink. Anybody out there feeling a little lax, a little slow, want to pick themselves up, want to get locked, cocked, and ready to rock? Shark Energy going to do that for you. Sorry. Buy two shirts for $20, get the second one free. Buy three for $10, get the fourth half off. Sam Nemi and Keith Dill absolutely putting it down out here. Namie starting to lap into traffic. He's going side by side by uh, with uh, Michael Osborne there. And Osborne not letting Nimi by. Nimi looks over like, what's wrong, dude? I'm lapping you. Oh, and Sam Nimi slowing down significantly at the end of the back straightaway. He's looking over his shoulder. 
I think he wants to talk to Osborne. Say, Michael, follow me around this way. Go right. Okay, we're going to go down here and now go left. And there they go. Osborne and Nimi. Oh, and Osborne spins out. Nimi looks over his shoulder. Non caring look of, uh, all right, Michael. Come on. Wow. Well, Rick Lake, thank you very much. Shark Energy, uh, sugarless, tastes awesome. The official energy drink of the uh, Pro Water, Pro Water Cross, Cross, Cross Tour. Tour presented by Broward Motorsports. And uh, we love our Shark Energy, that is for sure. Yes, we do. Perfect time in the afternoon for a little pick-me-up. White flag out, one left to go. Pro Sport GP. We need Pro-Am Ski GP to the line, please. Sam Nimi looking to make it a perfect day here in Racine, Wisconsin. Home of Scott Hike in the Kringle. Don't you know. Oh, we love Scott Hike, our race director and impresario of the Great Lakes Water Cross Tour. Pretty darn cool. If you want to do water cross racing right here in Wisconsin, go to uh, greatlakeswatercross.com and check it out. Local races you can be part of, so uh, definitely uh, contact Scott and get be a part of his racing. Checkered flags coming out, Kurt. All right, put your hands together. Your third moto winner, Sam Nemi. Behind him, a great job, Keith Dill. Oh, and Billy Deerman at Mach 7. <laughs> Playing with Michael Osborne back there. And Sam Nemi gets a checkered flag. Sam Nemi out there taking the win. Real happy today. Sam is the owner of Broward Motorsports, so he's got a good sponsor. All five of them. He's got a good yeah. sponsor. Yeah, he's got the best sponsor, oh, I think. Oh, man, yeah, living the dream for sure. Well, and he's, he's taking that flag not for his own, accomplice, uh, his own accomplishments, but for his team, for Hamilton, for the Hull, for Judge Motorsports putting the pressure, for everybody who's working so hard for their team. All right, Pro Am Ski GP. Oh, man. You know, and one word about Sam, you know, he's got the trick equipment. You know, he's got the Whamiltons. He's got the, the motor from Judge and all the good stuff. But you know what? You still got to ride it, man. You got to get out there and make it work. You can have the best stuff in the world, but it comes down to you as a rider to make it work and to put that machine into first place consistently. Absolutely, no question about it. And uh, there's one other word I'd use, humble. Very much, very unbelievably. Very approachable, great guy. You can talk to him about anything down in the pits. Yep, one of the nicest guys in the sport. There's no question about it. It's been a pleasure to meet him, get to know him, and uh, just a great representative for pro watercross racing. Sam Nemi, Broward Motorsports, congratulations. All right, Pro Am Ski GP, while well, Sam's teammate and sponsored rider Jimmy Wilson 
He's got two wins already. He's looking for a third. But I got a whole list of riders here that would oh. love to get beyond that. Kurt Nolenberg, I've been looking forward to this one. Because right down in the line, on the pole position, we've got uh, two awesome riders standing right next to each other. They're Wilson on the inside, and then 212, the Clipper, Mike Klippenstein right next to him, and they're jawing a little bit down on the line right now. <laughs> hey, you don't even speak English, eh? <laughs> And uh, uh, let's not forget Craig Warner. I was just going to say, where is Craig at down there? There's Craig Warner on the number two factory Kawasaki. Craig out of Ackworth now, uh, Georgia, but formerly a Southern California resident and uh, longtime competitor. Watch Craig ri race for, gosh, it seems like forever. Uh, the old Watusi rider back in the day on the Sea Dew. Yes, um, Jerry Watusi. And uh, yeah, and uh, so Craig, uh, Ray, another one of the guys like Clipper. Those guys go at it not just in close course racing like we have here in Racine, uh, Pro Watercross, but these guys battle across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we've captured them battling side by side for 50 miles across the Pacific Ocean to Catalina Island and back from Long Beach, which is an amazing event and to have guys that close for that distance you know we use a helicopter to obviously shoot it and capture it but uh these guys go at it in every way way shape or form uh mark Hahn 300 out in havasu 300 mile endurance races these guys love to compete and compete they will pro-am ski gp motor number three about to go off Whoa, Clipper getting a whole shot, but Wilson jumped that lighter boat up and just took it away from him. Yeah, you're right, Kurt. Clipper got a great start that time right behind Wilson. Wilson's going to stretch it out, though. Whoa. Wilson taking the inside split. Who's on the outside? Is that Craig? Yeah, oh, Warner. That's Warner for sure. The factory Kawasaki on the outside split. Here they go. Wilson oh, right on the inside. Down. Rider down on the inside. I think that was uh, Derek Pell. Oh, look at Warner. Here comes Warner with a full head of steam down the front straightaway. No. Nope. Wilson out in front of him. Nope. Not going to do it there. Wilson able to keep the lead. Here comes Warner making a move. Warner all over Wilson right now, challenging him for the lead. Moto number three for the blood, the mud, the blood, and the beer here in Racine. Wilson out front. Warner in second. Clipper in third. Richuk, no, that's not Richuk. That's Derek Powell in fourth. Wow, all the top four riders right yeah. there. We need Richuk to move up. Is that Richuk at the back? Well, this, this is what's interesting in this pro ski GP race. And look at Wilson. What did Tim Judge do between motos? Because Wilson just hit the nitrous button down that back straightaway and just Shh, catapulted no into the lead. It wasn't nitrous. Oh, I'm just joking about that, of course. But <laughs> but it looked like it because he definitely got a little horsepower boost right there. And Clipper on the inside, Warner on the outside. Clipper going at it. Warner, and look at Warner attacking this course. I got to tell you, Rick, we got a little bit of time. The way Craig Warner's boat is handling this weekend, there has definitely been changes made to it. Oh, War yeah, there's no question. These guys are working on ride plates. They're working on scoop grates. They're working on pump, pump setback. Uh, this is GP racing. All er Everything goes, uh, not to mention uh, carbs, cams, uh, you name it. Uh, I don't know what he's got under there this weekend. I haven't had a chance to uh, talk to him and take a look. But uh, definitely improve over uh, two, you know, two months ago in uh, in Pensacola Beach. It's definitely faster. There's no question. And handling better. You're right. Yeah, I think the handling better. It's way handling better compared to the increase in speed. I don't think it's really that much faster from what I've seen, you know, over the last few races. However, the way that boat is handling, significantly different. Warner's able to throw that thing into the corner, make the turn now, before he was always fighting a high side. The thing would bite and slip and bite and slip. Now he's able to attack the corners. Yeah, they're definitely working on the handling. And, you know, even reshaping the hull. They work, they reshape the hull, uh, try different things. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. And the, the, the improvements never end, the testing never ends. And, uh, you know, Clipper, though, right behind Warner, 
not too far back on that 212 R&D SXR 1500. Stock boat. It is a stock boat. He's got the R&D race sponsons on there, a Bill Ta Chapin R&D uh, very trick ride plate. They're experimenting with some things on that ride plate. Well, I tell you what, Jimmy Wilson is just a spectacular rider. And, you know, really, it's not just one race. He's consistently out front. If he doesn't get the whole shot, you know, every other year, um, he works his way through the pack. The same sort of smooth riding style. Reminds me a lot of Jeff Jacobs, to be honest. Well, one thing I find really interesting here in this race today, uh, Pro-Am Ski GP, is you've got the two-stroke uh, carbon hulled boat that uh, Jimmy Wilson's been on for a while now. Triple cylinder, two-stroke carbon fiber hull, a very trick, highly developed boat. And then the next four boats are Kawasaki SXR four-strokes. Right. Not another two-stroke in the in the front-running field. Yeah, and, and let's face it, that boat is the best Tim Judge can do. I know, I'm not saying they'll never innovate other things, but there's no question in my, in my mind that if there's one rider that Tim Judge puts his heart into, it's Jimmy Wilson. Oh, no question about it. And Wilson, Wilson uh, very much like Sam Neamey we mentioned before, he's got all the trick stuff, but you know, you got to make it work. And uh, there's no greater test than pro ski on a rider's ability because it's really rider ability. You know, you got to be, you. there's no place to hide on a racetrack on a pro ski boat. Let's face it, you or I are not going to get on Jimmy Wilson's boat and do anything but harm ourselves. <laughs> Flail. <laughs> harm ourselves is correct. Warner's starting to wick it up a little bit. Now I'm wondering, is the wind, you can feel it getting rougher. A little bit. As it gets rougher out there, the heavier Kawasaki might be able to keep uh, a higher top speed down that back straightaway, the jet turn back straightaway. And Warner doing everything he can to keep that thing hooked up following Jimmy Wilson. Yeah, I think there's no question, Kurt, that the rougher it gets definitely uh, is, is favorable to the Kawasaki. Having said that, however, we had really rough conditions in uh, both Pensacola Beach and uh, Panama City Beach. And uh, nonetheless, Jimmy Wilson prevailed handily. Well, I'm going to say that uh, the equipment that Warner, Clipper, a few of the other SXR riders are riding now, they're definitely much more race worthy than they were two months ago. Getting, getting better by the race, no question about it, as Jimmy Wilson leads down the front straightaway, boat number one out in front. Kurt Warner, boat number two in second, and then 212, Mike Klippenstein in third place. And these guys are going at it right now. Three of the top riders in the world riding as hard as they can here in Racine, Wisconsin on the Pro Watercross Tour, putting on a show out in front. But really, it's Jimmy Wilson not making mistakes because Craig Warner is right behind him. I mean, Craig Warner's been behind him all day, and Jimmy Wilson has yet to bobble, has yet to make a mistake, nothing. Not Gone one. down, hasn't slid out in a corner. He has not made a mistake on the water today. The only thing I've seen him do is slow down and play with a couple of people because oh, well, he was bored. That's about it. And that's the only time he's let off the gas also. See David Cabrera coming by, another long-term pro, great rider out there. He's not having the results he wants this weekend, but uh, I'm sure we'll see him out here again. And Richuk about to get lapped. Wow. That's as fast as Richuk is. It's the, these are the top riders in the world right here coming behind him. And Warner starting to close that gap on Wilson, Kurt. Lapped riders could be a factor. Here comes Warner. Let's see if Warner has got any. Oh, Wilson, better watch out because Warner's on the gas. Well, Warner's got that heavier boat. We hit over that section. That part of the uh, track is always a little sketchy because of the hole. On the far right-hand side, look at Richuk going wide. Yeah, Richuk needs to move out of the way for these guys right now, and he's doing so. And what great sportsmanship. You've got to love that. Real pro oh, riding. Oh, Richuk goes down trying not to get in front of Klippenstein. Yeah, he, you know, he got off his pace there, off his line, off his pace, which just throws you completely out of it. But 
out in front right now. It's Wilson. Here comes Clipper. Clipper wants to be part of this party as well. It's Clipper now charging. Going to the oh, inside. Clipper goes inside. Wilson and Warner on the outside. Let's see. Wilson well, and Warner got clean water. Clipper's got a rider in front of him. Not sure how much of an advantage that's going to be for Clipper, but he's going to take a shot oh, anyway. Oh, it's going to work. Oh, he's going to take second. Look at this. Klippenstein looks over. He's got second place. Sets his sights on Wilson now. Warner dropped back on that outside split, Kurt. Unbelievable. Mike Klippenstein, the legend, personal watercraft racing, 27-time world champion now, putting the pressure on Jimmy Wilson. Mike, 50 years old, out of Fort McMurray, Canada. Wilson, 29 years old, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And these two are the two of the top riders in the world, along with Craig Warner, and they are going at it here in Pro Ski GP Moto number three. This is it. I don't know how many world championships there are between the three, the first and first, second, and third riders, but it's a huge number. Oh man! Well, I, with, I know Clippers got the 20, twenty-seven. With twenty-seven alone, I mean, good lord! Well, how many did and Jacobs Clipper goes have? inside again. Yeah, well, he Jacobs, likes it. Jacobs has the most overall stand-up titles, but uh, Clippers are in all. Oh, look at Clipper. White flag, last lap to go. And lap riders in front of Jimmy Wilson and the Clipper, Mike Klippenstein. And Klippenstein, fit as a fiddle, goes down right there. Klippenstein extremely fit. Here he goes. One more shot at Jimmy Wilson. Wilson has not made a mistake. Let's see if he can keep it clean through the final lap here in Racine. Oh, I know Wilson will keep it clean. It's the lap riders in front of him and where he comes up on them. That's going to make a difference for uh, Mike Klippenstein. Klippenstein on the R&D, SXR 1500 in second place. Tracking down Jimmy Wilson one last time. Now the jet trim back straight away. Here they go. You know Bill Chapin's at home watching the live stream on Pro Watercross, yelling and screaming for Mike Klippenstein. Oh, here we go. Couple turn. Oh, oh Mike Clipper inside. going inside. Wilson going outside. Wilson's got lap traffic. Clipper's got a clean track in front of him. Clipper's got clean water. Wilson looks over and sees Clipper coming. Oh, it's going to be Wilson. Wilson's going to take it. He's coming out of that turn with a full head of steam. Here comes Clipper. It's going to be close. And it's Wilson. Jimmy Wilson takes the win. <laughs> Third in a row. Klippenstein, they, wow. he and Clipper bump hands. Wow. Here comes Craig Warner. Warner takes a third. What a race. Wilson, Clipper, and Warner, one, two, three. You got to wonder, Craig Warner's got to be thinking, will I ever beat Jimmy Wilson again? I love this stuff. I'll tell you what, watching these guys battle in pro ski, I absolutely dig it, man. It's always a treat. And these guys put on quite a show here today in uh, Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, wow, what a day. Pro-Am Runabout GP on the line. Well, let's look at some of the points here. Klippenstein. We have seven. Wilson, of course, will have the win. Huge congratulations Boy, yeah. to Jimmy Wilson, Tim Judge, on, on a perfect weekend. Uh, I don't think w Will, uh, Wilson won every moto he entered this weekend, uh, six for six. Uh, you can't do better than that, to say the least. Jimmy Wilson absolutely dominated here in Racine today and all weekend long. You know sponsors love that, right? How'd you do this weekend? Well, I won, I won. I won, I won, I won, I won, I won. Six out of six, man. You can't beat that as good as it gets right there. All right. Pro-Am Runabout GP on the line. Final uh, race of the weekend here in Racine, and uh, what a weekend it's been.
All right, on the number eight machine out of Rydell, Georgia, Yamaha mounted Jeff Dykowski. Boat number 66 out of Cuermo, Kansas. On the Sea Dew, 47 year old Mark Roberts. On the 75 Sea Dew out of Essex, Maryland, Justin Taylor. Number 502 out of Denver, North Carolina, the factory Yamaha, Brian Baldwin. On the 717 Sea Dew out of Bacon, Michigan. Alan Delecky and 777 out of Waco, Texas, the Dean's team rider Tim Miller on that number 426 boat. 426, not 777. We got that correction. Well, thank you very much, Scott Hike. Final moto. final moto coming up of the weekend wow what an amazing weekend here in Racine and I can't believe it's the Rick last Lake, race of the weekend say it's not so say uh, uh, oh you know what that makes it the last opportunity oh no looks like he's breaking it down are you still giving stuff away there's not much left five or ten ten dollar t-shirts and if you smile at him really good, maybe seven fifty. Go down and see the price last year. There's only a few shirts. I just went down there and checked, and uh, picked up some Shark Energy. And there's only a few uh, t-shirts left down there. So, if you want a Pro Water Cross t-shirt, you got one last chance. Ten dollars at the merchandise booth. Ten dollar, don't holler. Pro Am Runabout GP on the line. The Fastest boats on the water. Did I hear him right? 25 laps? <laughs> <laughs> With a fueling stop? Baldwin or Delecki? Oh, man. Brian Baldwin right on it. Alan Delecki way late on the throttle. Let's see how it pans out. Baldwin on the outside. Delecki on the inside. Alan Delecki. Out of uh, Michigan, on the inside, that brilliant green and black sea dew on the outside, Brian Baldwin. Oh, Baldwin is absolutely flying on the outside. Keep an eye on Brian Baldwin as he comes onto this front straightaway with a full head of steam National on this factory GP Yamaha. National world champion. Just on the gas and flying out in front. Delecky and say there's Justin Taylor back in the fourth spot. Tim Miller in third. Brian Baldwin on the gas here. Moto number three, Pro-Am, runabout GP, and he is laying it down here in Racine. Baldwin goes to the inside. Delecky Boy, behind him on the inside split. I'll tell you what, Delecky, for compared with who, uh, with who's in front of him, he, this guy is on fire. Riding very well in early going of each moto, he has been very strong, and uh, has been close to the pace that Brian Baldwin's been on. Not quite there, but pretty darn close. Impressive riding to be sure for Alan Delecky this weekend. Brian Baldwin, he ended the uh, jet trim back straight away. He turns around, gives a little wave to Alan Delecky coming the other direction. Hey, you better hurry up if you want to play with me. Both go to the inside split once again. Baldwin's decided this is definitely the faster way around, as has De Delecky. So the race now between Miller and, uh, and uh, excuse me, Justin Taylor for that fourth position. Tim Miller pushing hard on that machine. The one that he brought broke, so he's got he's on a borrowed boat. The 426 he's on in third place right now, Miller. And uh, but out front right now, it's again, 
Been saying it all weekend long. Brian Baldwin, man, wow, what a performance. And Amazing. I do believe that uh, Brian does most of the work on his boat. Factory Yamaha, Riva sponsored Brian Baldwin. Brian out of North Car Denver, North Carolina, 39 years old. I believe that's Denver. And he's a... <laughs> that, that's what you would say. <laughs> uh, I'm sticking with Denver. <laughs> Little bit of humor at the end of the uh, race like, weekend, it's like folks. It's like you have a different word for everything, Kurt. Apparently. I'm, uh, what do they call that? French. Deflex, uh, Di Dikowski, Dis Dysflexics, one of those things. French. France. Baldwin absolutely boiling the water out there. That Yamaha is brilliantly fast. He rides it as well as that boat can be ridden. Brian, an absolutely amazing personal watercraft enthusiast with just a, I guess, a garage full of personal watercraft. He owns a lot of them. He's just really into it. Lives, eat, and breathes the sport. And you can see the results of that out here today. No question about it. Yeah, he says he's got a crappy mechanic. By the way, he does all the work himself. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, he's, uh, he's being a little hard on himself as he goes out and dominates once again. Yeah, defending champion in uh, two classes, not bad. And Delecki, I'll tell you what, very, very impressed with Alan Delecki. I know Michigan's a ways from uh, North Carolina, but he might imagine, he might consider going down and uh, moving right next door to Brian Baldwin. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he's riding very well this weekend. I'd like to see him continue on the tour. It'd be fun to see him race on that sea dew because he has really shown well here in Racine this weekend. No question about it. And he's, he's uh, keeping Brian Baldwin uh, honest as he can be. Yeah, definitely miss Arminio Antosca, a sea dew factory rider, not on tour this year. And uh, we, we, we miss him a lot. And uh, cause he not only is a really cool guy, but uh, he keeps Brian Baldwin pretty honest. Oh, and those two put on some exceptional challenges to each other. Yeah, absolutely. They get it on, no question. So, Arminio definitely missed this this year for, for sure. Arminio, if you're watching on the uh, live stream, we miss you. We'd love to have you at the next event. Boy, Justin Taylor pushing hard on that number 75. Uh, it doesn't look like he's backed off even a little bit, but the difference between the GP and the stock class, very clear. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, uh, GP is pretty unlimited. Stock boats are around the 300 horsepower range in uh, the uh, pro class. Some of them a little less, but in that 300 horsepower range, let's just say GP, I've seen boats up to in the 600 horsepower arena. Believe it or not, 900 pounds, give or 800, 900 pounds watercraft with a five or 600 horsepower motor. So That's a power to weight ratio. Think about that for a second. Oh man, are you kidding me? That's uh, that's even better than the factory road racing bikes I used to race, even including a TZ750. Well, they and they are very, very challenging to hang on to um, and ride, to be sure, because you'll see these guys, uh, they'll b put bolsters on the back of the seats just to keep them in place. They accelerate so fiercely, and uh, the turning, forget about it. Hanging on in those turns, the way these guys ride, takes a tremendous amount of strength. Yeah, and it does take one of those special seats to help keep you in there. Oh, you, can, you see why they build them like that now, and... Uh, it's kind of crazy, really. You know, it reminds me of a documentary on uh, Ferrari and their racing team. You know, most of the racing cars into the, the late 50s, early 60s didn't even have seat belts in them. It was very no. common for these guys <laughs> to get ejected out of, you know, on, not many lived, but uh, no. ejected off their machines. And I'll tell you what, they, I've seen some watercraft racers on runabouts get ejected as far as I ever want to see a human being fly through the air. Oh, yeah, we've got some great video. That Without hydro flight, of course. Oh, we've got so much good stuff. 
that we've captured over the years uh, for watercraftrider.com of uh, <clears throat> can you go there and see racing. it it's all on there YouTube our own website everything watercraftrider.com and yeah. uh, there's some good racing uh, uh, through the years that's on there and yeah it's it's good stuff do you spell it rider r-i-d-e-r that's correct all right watercraftrider.com that's like ProWaterCross.com. Exactly. If this uh, tickles your fancy, you'd like to start watercraft racing, uh, there's a very, very large contingent of racers here in Wisconsin. Look up Scott Hike. Call him at home, 2 or 3 in the morning. He'd be happy to help you. GreatLakesWaterCross.com. GreatLakesWaterCross.com. Check it out. And you can get involved in this sport real easily. The great group. And they'll hook you up and get you involved in racing. WeBeFast.com. Baldwin all alone. Boy, I wonder, I wonder if he's alone. I wonder if he's got earbuds in there and plays music or something. Got to. I got to, got to, got to get away. Well, he is completely checked out from everybody. Uh, it's amazing the lead he has here. Moto number three, pro runabout GP. As we wind things down here after a beautiful weekend, a perfect weekend for racing in Racine. Racing in Racine. Can't beat it. I love this place. Outstanding location. As good as it gets. And uh, you know yeah, what? Perfect. I got a great idea. Brian Baldwin, way out in front. You know what I'm thinking he should do? He should pull in here, pick up Carrie Grieving, and take her on a victory lap the last lap of the race. What do you think, Carrie? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I agree with you. <laughs> Carrie Grieving from uh, the city of Racine. Yep. Been so. Real Racine. Real Racine. That's the deal here. Totally generous and uh, oh, the best people I'm, you could oh, ever imagine. You. Best hospitality, wonderful town, and this beautiful race site here on Lake Michigan. Everything I expected. I looked forward to this event all year, and it's been everything and more that I uh, expected. And it's really been a great weekend. I've enjoyed it immensely. That's right. Let's not forget Killer Kringles. That's right. They are Killer Kringles, I will say. Baldwin getting ready to lap the field here. Alan DeLecky on that 717 as he comes down the front straightaway. He's ridden a lonely race himself right behind him. Tim Miller and Justin Taylor, all three of them, they got a little battle going between themselves. Brian Baldwin wants to join them. Two, Two laps, laps to go. Stick out. <laughs> And yes, we do finish each other's sentences. Baldwin, wow, what a performance this weekend. Had a tough break in the uh, stock class with an engine failure in moto number three, dropped him, dropped him down, but nonetheless, an absolutely perfect performance of course here in uh, pro-am runabout gp as he has not been headed by there's no one even close to brian's speed here and uh, he has just completely blown away the field all weekend long in gp well the final laps coming up brian baldwin makes the turn white flag comes out Randy just got that flag up in the nick of time, man. I think it was a quarter second back of the nick of time. <laughs> <laughs> Brian was looking over. You going to give it? You going to give it? You going to give come it? On. Okay, I better look where I'm going. Randy puts up the white flag. He's like, come on, brother. Let's see it. Oh, gosh. Brian Baldwin going to finish up this final lap. And this, unfortunately, will put an end to the racing here. We want to put a, a huge shout-out to all of our sponsors. Of course, uh, Yamaha, uh, Broward Motorsports, 
Uh, we wouldn't be here without Sam Nemi and his crew. We appreciate them. Hydroturf, Shark Energy, keeping us awake. Jet Trim, Bitch and Stitching, Watcon.com, Sea-Doo, Yamaha. And Checkered a host. Flag comes out. Brian Baldwin takes the win. Wow, what a great day, great weekend for Brian Baldwin. Takes that checkered flag for a little <laughs> victory lap. He's pretty stoked. Oh, Could hear yeah. him yelling from up here. Yep. Typical he, Brian Baldwin. Got it. Got to let people know how he feels. He has got a, the loudest yell I've ever heard. He's got to be a rebel because that is a rebel yell, man. Oh, yeah. If I've ever heard one. That might have been what... Uh, was it Leonard Skidder, Rebel, uh, Rebel Yell? Maybe. No, maybe. We'll get back to you on that. Okay. All right. Well, the rest of the field, uh, where Brian takes a victory lap, comes through. Alan Delecki. That's not right. Did a great job. Seriously, in second position. Yeah, he did. He looked good. Behind him, Tim Miller and then Justin Taylor. How about a huge round of applause yeah. for all of our racers today? Great job, everybody. Wonderful weekend of racing coming to a close here in beautiful Racine. And we've got uh, Carrie here, who has been an amazing hostess for the weekend. And you and your team and your city are absolutely phenomenal. We have had the best time here. I look forward to it all year because I love the Midwest, but this place rocks. It was really, really exciting to be the only Midwest stop this year. For you guys to come here, choose us, I can't tell you how excited we were. Well, thank you. We are excited to be here. And Kurt? I'm exceptionally excited. I'm <laughs> telling you. Why are you looking down at me think, laughing at me? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know what I'm going to throw up here, do you? Here's what I'm throwing up for you. Let's show it to the rest of the world. That is for you in appreciation of your support. Real Racine, we thank you so much, Carrie. Thank and you frankly, thank you. we work with a lot of people around the country and a lot of great people, but you guys uh, are at the top right now. Aww. Yeah, this thank has you been so much. phenomenal. Thank you. You do a great job. I don't know how you do it all, but <laughs> you make it happen. you got a great town. We do. We really do. And it's, it's exciting and fun to bring you here and everybody here, all your racers, this is something that we don't get to do all the time. So when you're here, it should be a fun time. And the weather, ha, I said it in the beginning, and it held. Yeah, we, we scored. We scored on the weather. This is as good as it gets. No question. Yeah. You know what I'm going to say? Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd love to be back again. Oh, Can I would love to have you back next year, 2019. I'm already looking forward to it. We're on it. Carrie, thank you so thank much you. for you thank and you all of your much. crew. So you're awesome. Yeah. All right, we're going to have our award ceremony in about a half an hour. Yep, sounds good. Um, as usual, we're going to ask everyone as they're clearing the beach, if you see any garbage there, anything out of place, please pick it up. Take it with you. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. We're going to wrap things up for our wonderful audience that's followed all weekend long from around the globe. I'll tell you what, Rick Lake. Kurt and we've, we've had a lot of fun over many years in this sport. But I gotta say, this weekend, this is a good one. It it's it's on the calendar as one of the, the top forty seven. <laughs> well Would said. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not. I'm in very sincere when I say, I love it here. This has been great. The, of course, the weather, as Carrie mentioned, absolutely spectacular. We're talking seventies degrees and the breeze blowing off uh, Lake Michigan right into our face. Uh, we're, we were treated all weekend to a wonderful time, Kurt. Uh, every single thing that happened this weekend was spectacular. And frankly, I just don't want it to end. Let's I don't, do I it don't again. Either. And the racing was great. We saw some great racing, as always, on the Pro Watercross Tour. Always. And uh, well, we got a couple of weeks to go, and we're going to be down in Georgia. I'm looking forward. Lake Hartwell, they've always received us well. Yep. Um, great group of, of riders down there. Yeah, absolutely. A um, lot, of, lot of friendly people coming to watch the races. If Real you're watching nice. online, you've got some vacation, head on down to Hartwell, Georgia, and then hang around for a week and come with us over to Charleston for the national championships. Yep, looking forward to it, Kurt. We'll uh, see you in a couple of weeks. All right. Rick Lake, Kurt Nolenberg, we're out of here.
located in southeastern Wisconsin. Come discover the real Racine County. Plan your visit today at realracine.com. Don't you know the race is over? What are you watching, eh? 